Hey, I'm Richard Miller with Goldie May, and this is the live genealogy research series. Watch as James Tanner and I, along with invited guests, work through a genealogy problem with no script and no agenda. Maybe you'll learn from the big strategy, maybe you'll learn from the small features and the tools, or maybe you'll just see a better way to do it and you can leave a comment so we can all learn. I hope you find this really helpful. Now here is the research. Hey, welcome to episode six of the Unrehearsed Research with James Tanner and I. We uh, are excited to look at another case. James is a really good sport to just jump in on any case, sight unseen for him, and just uh, go with the flow. So we're going to do another one of those today. Uh, James, this is an ancestor of mine from Denmark. And so I thought to just have some variety in our research, we could go to Denmark today and uh, Danish records. This one's a fun one for me because she and her husband are buried in the Provo Cemetery where, you know, and we live in Provo. So we can go visit her burial place sometimes and we do. Again, this is kind of an end of line, messy situation where the records are clear to a point. And then as we kind of hop over to Denmark, that's where it gets messy. So I just wanted to take a look at this with you and get your thoughts on where we could go next. And hopefully this is helpful for people that have uh, Danish ancestors as well. You know, th she was born in Denmark in Copenhagen, and we have a few records of that. And then we have parents for her on the tree. You'll see that there's, you know, maybe some messiness there. But then um, source-wise, I think it's these first four or five sources that are that kind of indicate her parents' names, where you see, you know, her christening record says Johan as her father, Marie Fritz as her mother. And uh, I think there's, you know, four or five of those. I don't think I have a death record for her to kind of confirm her parents' name. So we could go looking for that. Yeah, maybe I'll just stop there and you can tell me where to go, James. Okay, well, let's look at a couple of things that I always have to see preliminarily. Obviously, uh, we need to look down at the family and uh, make sure that the at least the dates and things are consistent and they make sense yeah. so yeah. that we don't end up with some, looking for something that needs to be corrected before we even get started. What I would suggest is that we look at, um, let's check, click on her husband, Christian Wilhelm. Okay, okay so he was, uh, they're all from Copenhagen or Copenhagen. Yeah. And Let's, we're going to focus like all usual on the places, but let's, we'll come back to that because we're just trying to see. So okay. he was uh, born in 49 and uh, then was christened a little few days later. And so that's fine. Let's go down. Let's go back to, well, we can go down to his okay. children. It doesn't okay. matter at the same family. And uh, we've just looked at her briefly, but let's go back and look at her. Her uh, dates, uh, 45, she's a little bit older, christened in 46. Have a very specific place for a christening. Let's look at the sources, see where the christening record, make sure that that's at church record. Okay, so there's Josephine Wilhelmina Jorgensen, and it would be in Trini Trinitatis, Copenhagen. At the church. Okay, a few minutes. We'll come back to this and and see if that's what that if that's saying what we wanted to say. Okay. Okay. So let's go back to the children real quick. Just click on them as we come down, and then we'll get some idea about this family. So, okay, uh, they've got another church, the Four Frays Kirka. Okay, let's go down to the next one. That just says Copenhagen. Okay. Now we're to Vorfreis again. Okay. Vorfreis. Part of this might be just reporting issues. They're, they're very consistent here. Correctly. This is, uh, Josephine is an ancestor where I've looked at her 1910 census record where she reports the number of children living and uh, born total, and they match to these. Oh, okay. These eight that's that's uh, good to number wise. Know. Yeah. Okay, so let's look at some of these places. If we, if you want to go up and just get, let's get on the map and put some of these places okay. on them. Well, you have them on the map, so yeah, I'll go ahead and just map oh, the places. I've got to remember all the new stuff. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And then okay, then just, so uh, now we're going to look at uh, wherever she was born. So let me show you something that's going to be kind of helpful in in understanding what I'm doing here. Yeah, uh, let's go back to family search just real quick. Leave the maps yeah. open, and yeah. we'll we'll come back to maps. Go up to uh, search catalog up at the top. 
and put in Denmark. And let's jump. Well, we'll go to all the records here and then go up to places within and you'll see it under K, Copenhagen. Yeah, there. but that, yeah, it's telling you to go to say part of no. it. Yeah. yeah, that's where it's telling you to go. Okay, so then see this, what it says here is Copenhagen, all those different, those places listed. Yeah. Kostrup, Valby, Fredericksburg, and Bruncho. All of those are in Copenhagen. So if you say you're from Copenhagen, you could be from any one of those five different places. Okay. Now let's go down to Copenhagen, past all the census records, which are really good, by the way, in Denmark, and go back into the 1600s. So they're hmm. very helpful. And then we look up at, uh, we don't have, go up again. Let's see. Okay, church records. There's like 62. Some yeah. of those are not going to be applicable. Hmm. But the ones that are here that say uh, Kirkabuker, mm -hmm. those are the church, the church records. So okay. basically you have them by ear, uh, but there's big ones and there's all sorts of one. But you see what's happening is they're looking at the, there's the, the country, there's districts within the country, then there's parishes within the districts. And there are civil and ecclesiastical parishes. So there, there's they sometimes have the same name, but they're they're different because it depends on who's the one recording the records. When you get into Scandinavian genealogy, the first thing that you'll want to know is that everybody has exactly the same names. And basically, when you get back past about 1850, it's about 100% patronymic, meaning. Mm. Daughters come out like if it's Jens, Jens Christensen, for example, his children will be, let's say it's Anna, uh, Jens' daughter, because mm. his first name, and then his son would be Jensen. And then um, basically, you've got to figure your way through that. It's helpful because obviously you're not going to get too far off if you see that the parents' father's name was Lars and all the kids are Jensen. You've got to figure out something. Uh, you've obviously gone off track there. It helps generation to generation. Yeah. But it's it's not unusual to see the same to see exactly the same names for the children and exactly the same names for the parents, but not the same families. Okay. So in other words, Tricky. you can see up to five people. We've seen I've seen at least five uh, people with the same exact name and the same exact birth date, born on the same day. Wow. Okay. Yeah, so, it's tricky. Yeah, there, there's only a, a, a I'm not, I've heard about a hundred, but I, it, I think it's more than that. But there's only a few uh, given names that they use: recycle, recycle, recycle. Uh, okay. The next thing that happens that makes things really complicated is very common throughout Europe and even into the United States in the early years. Not so much today. If a child dies young, shortly after birth, up to two to three to five years. And the next child who's born of the same sex will get the same name. Mm. And that happens even two, three times in a row. So you may think you're going, you know, this is getting really duplicative because you've got three kids with the exact same name in that family. But then you do what uh, my wife's been doing for the last two days, and that is go look for death records. Mm. I just was uh, going to say that, yeah, we have a lot of different records, and each one of these is actually a different place. Um, as you'll see, Happens some of them are Trinitatis there. Yeah. And so you see there's, there's different places. So, and it looks like Vorfru is up here. Mm -hmm. That was the oh, other yeah. one. There you go. Where they were all born. Okay. Mm -hmm. So let's go back to the, to uh, Google maps Tree. and just like have a look at some of these places. Okay. So first of all, Trin uh, Trinitatis. Um, let's go to Vofru and see where we're talking about. V R O F R U. Yeah, there you go. See, okay. So you're, I mean, there's no problem here. They're two Half blocks or yeah. four, three blocks away from each other. Yeah. So um, depending, they may have done, they gotten the baby christened in um, a different church simply because the priest was in a different church or because mm. it was some reason the priest was gone or whatever. 
So okay. does, that's not a concern. If they'd been like more than five or six miles apart, then you'd begin to wonder if you had the right person. Okay. Okay. So these are, these are fairly good and we are able to get to the record. So let's see um, back to family surge. Let's go to your target person. Uh, let's go back and look at her christening record. And I think we've got, well, we may have multiple or three of them. Yeah. Okay. So there's her parents' names. Mm -hmm. Go down. Yep. Johan Ferdinand Jorgensen and Marie Fritz. Let's see what we have in the family tree from that. Um, So, yeah. Okay. And let's look at their, let's look at his sources. See if that is sources where he is the first church records. Marie, oh, that's somebody who died. Okay. Hmm. That's a child. Brother to the... But that's all, again, that's in Trinitatis. Hmm. So they're consistent. Good records, better than I've seen for a a while. It may look like I'm jumping around. That's what I do. That's good. That's good. I've got... There's multiple things that I'm trying to see... And if I look at the, if I look here, the records are consistent with what we already have before, and so forth. We can then have higher degree of certainty. But look down at the next where it says the actual place. It's the Heiliggeist Kirka, hmm. and that. Let's try that one in the map. Oh, it's going to be the yeah church. It's K A R K E. Oh, there it is. Okay, that's it. Okay, so they're all oh, yeah, about so three blocks away from each other. Yeah, they're all right okay. downtown. Okay. Okay, so that gets us started. I find a very high percentage of the, the families groups that I look at to be inconsistent. Let's just go to Google and look and just put up Danish Archive. All of this is free. You can go in and search here. Okay. If you go up to um, myheritage.com. And go to research collection catalog. And then go down where it says um, places by location. You know, I think I do have a shortcut for that here. My heritage yeah. collection catalog. Let me do that. Yeah, here we go. See, there's 107 million Danish records. So just for a just for, for a quick check here, uh, put your have, have you got your tree here at all? Mm-mm, um, I don't. Okay, let's let's just do a search, uh, do a, a name search. Go up to the catalog you're you're searching in Denmark. Okay, now put in your your yeah, ancestor, the, the lady. Is that her? That's her. Yeah. Okay, just go down because what you have are are all of the people also have the same person in others. These are different my heritage family trees with that same person. You want me to skip and the trees and go to the historical records? No. Look here at who ha- look at who okay. has this record. Okay. It says managed by in yeah. the heading there. That's a relative of mine. Yeah. Do you know him? Yeah. Her? Yep. I do yeah her. Yep. Oh, okay. And then so you go down, managed by each one of those. So there, what you have are individuals who are also available, gotten the same information. Now, the danger of looking at user trees is that they may just all be copying from each other. Mm-hmm. And so they, it doesn't guarantee that it's correct. But in what you'd like to see is that there's a tree with someone who is still in Denmark. Mm-hmm. And if you do that, then your chances of being actually that same person is, is just quite, quite That'd be good. cool. Yeah. Yeah. And if you have a DNA test, uh, you may end up with a confirmation from DNA that you happen to be related to this person. And uh-huh. thereby, and thereby they're there, they're doing the records in Danish. And the chances are that they're much, they're at least a higher chance of them being accurate than having been copied over from english records yeah okay good thought so as you're going down through all these people there's going to be quite a list of them here if you just keep going down you'll see you don't need to go you can just scroll through and see 
And then there's a family search, family tree. But now you're getting into the actual records themselves. So by jumping over here to my heritage, what you have done is saved yourself a lot of time of clicking and searching through the catalog and, and uh, looking for the records that are on, on family search. So in practice, do you end up going to the Danish archive still, or is it all, you know, for your no, purposes? They, they, yeah, everything here? just came. They got all these records from Denmark, from the archives, and they have the, the images. So if you mm -hmm. just click on an image here of, of that person, that church record there, then you can see, okay, now here's the other part of it that's, um, that's important to understand, is as you go back, go back to one more screen back. Yeah. Just look at this. No, right. right. No, Sorry. no. Yeah. No. To the place. Look, what they've done is they they extract. This is not an index. They extract all of the information. This is a what you call an all name, all word uh, index of the of the records. So everybody in that in the record here for Christian Wilhelms Cook is basically extracted here. So if you go down now to the real record, then you'll see you have a copy of that. Mm. And then there's some alternate information oh, down here, yeah. that tells you whether there's been an error in the transcription or mm. whatever. Okay. That's great. And then there's the original, of course, the original records that you can look at um, and verify. Hey, that's great. Okay, so this is just getting oriented to what you're actually, how you're actually working here with uh, with these Danish records. Yeah. So if you go back, if you go back to Josephine now, the the general rule always is that we begin research in the country of arrival, not the country of departure for an immigrant, and so we need to to know where this information came from. Now, we already know that she has a supposed, we assume there's this correct record. It's a consistently correct record for her christening from Denmark. So we're not overly concerned about the accuracy of some of the things, to some of the things we're going here. So all of these children were born in the country. It looks like that whole family came. Let's see if I... Yeah, I think a lot of the kids were in Copenhagen, yeah. Yeah, see, everybody's already stacked up there at, at the same place. Two in Salt Lake, maybe. Except, what, the last two? Yeah. Okay, so that family consistency is good, and the names are all working out. So, okay, so what other kinds of uh, questions would you have about this? Obviously, you felt that this was a... Yeah, maybe it would be taking, uh, you know, maybe it would have been just, taking this back past Johan, her father, to further generations okay, in Denmark. Okay. And, and maybe you've really answered my question, which is that my heritage has a great, you know, great copy of the, the uh, Danish church records and other Danish records. And so I would need to just go, you know, I would have to kind of keep my mind focused, like you said, that I'm looking very locally for matching names and uh, not kind of trivially counting it as a match if the names match, but really making sure I'm in the right place. And then I would want to just, you know, work my way back and make sure that, you know, it, it, are Anders and Caroline the correct parents for Johan and go back and back and back. But I, I, I think that sets the parameters of, you know, where do I look and then how, how focused do I need to be as I look in Denmark? I think that that kind of sets the parameters for. What okay. So let's, next. let's look at Johan Ferdinand Jorgensen. At his yeah. records, so yeah, so we've got his sources. sources. Yeah, okay. in our first one's a, thirty-five, so he's already. I think he's already yeah. married. Here. Well, this yeah. is for a child. This mm -hmm. is a daughter christening. Yeah. But the fact that they were that they're being christened in the same place is is at least a, a good start to knowing that you have the right families. Okay, so I understand. Looking like what we have here, a lot of children. Let's click down and see actually if we have his. And we have a census record too, which would be helpful. But so let's just click down okay, and see. So they've got the right names. Let's look at that census record because we don't have much information in this, what's been extracted. Okay. The census in, in um, 
Denmark were very regularly done. The problem with census records is that you're likely to miss any child, children that were, that were born and died between the two censuses. And that was more frequently frequent than it would be here. So if you go down through this, start at the, I think, up the top, and let's see where we're that record there. Yeah, let's yeah. find his, his entry. Okay, looks like it's there. Johan. Johan. Yeah, and there she is. Okay, that's the family, 3032. Toure is not a name I recognize. Maybe that's... Let's go back. Um, let's you go maybe back check yeah. that. Yeah, check, check I just didn't remember it, but let's see. Oh, yeah, there you go. It's probably Sora. that one. Sora, yeah. It says girl. She was 1836. What, what census is this? Let's look at the date. That one what? was 40, and she's four. 18. Yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah 1840. As long as you're corresponding between each of these people and the dates and where they end up and the family groups together, the, the chances of the dates being agreed, the places being agreed, and the names in the right order being agreed decrease the, the possibility of, of having missed and gone to a different family, not mm -hmm. eliminating it. Not, not by no means does it always go away, but uh, it also helps to see if you've got all the right people. Now you've got a couple of other people. You've got a Christian Hagen and a Frederick Horling living in the same house. So let's go over this to the right, the right to so the right. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So now you're, this is where you're going to have to jump into beginning to understand not only just the names, but some of the words. Okay. And so we'd be getting into translation issues here. Okay. And These ones were... Now let's up real quick to another plus sign on family search. I don't want to lose anything we're on. So oh, just okay. this new, new tab for family search? Yeah. And just go up to search, research wiki. And this one's going to take a couple of seconds to come up. It always does because it's very large. And then put in a Danish word list. Now, here's, here's a handy thing that you always should have to sort of at the side while you are available when you're doing Danish research. Unless you happen to speak Danish and you read, you know, old German script and mm. you really understand all this stuff then it's, you know, that's going to be easy. And we rely heavily on people who have those skills because um, uh, this is something that I can do. I can read these records, but I don't do that often enough that I have to have some kind of reference out there to work. So here we go. Here's all the basic words that you need to know about Danish. And they have these word lists for, for a lot of, for almost all the European countries. So it's very helpful. If you scroll down, you'll see A to Z. Well, actually, A to all the extra letters. Hmm. Now, one thing you've got to remember when you're working with language with some of the European languages other than English is that the, the alphabets don't match up. You need to be aware that when you're starting to look up for things alphabetically, they come in different alphabetical order. Uh, that's helpful to know. The, uh, when you're looking at one of these word lists, what you need to remember is that the, the order of the words is what's important um, when you have all these extra characters, depending on which language. And, and in uh, Danish, there are three additional letters. Those letters are like other letters. You don't just ignore them and you don't pretend that they're not letters and you I'm just transcribe like them. Yeah, yeah. yeah. In other words... An A-E, you can write it A-E in English, but that doesn't mean it's going to, to um, uh, alphabetize the same way. <laughs> Very helpful. As if, it, as if that letter was used. Uh, so wherever it's possible, and it particularly even in uh, family search, when their names and the places have these characters, then you should use the characters off the keyboard because the uh, mm. computer will recognize that that's a different letter. And so that'll help. Um, I see too many times where you, you see them kind of uh, either ignored or transcribed into like two, like the AE word I um, into two different characters. So that's that's really kind of the problem. Okay, so we've done 
some interesting background here. Let's go back to Johan, go back through his sources just a little bit here. Okay. Here's a sense, another census. Let's look at that one. And see also 1840, can... right? So that's interesting, but could so, be a transcription difference, right? We said that other one was Ture, and this is saying J-U-N-E, June. Oh, somebody translated it. Mm-hmm. That's, let's look at the, that census itself and see if that's transcription error. See, the problem you have when this happens is that because these are censuses and they're 10, 10 years apart, uh, or they've done it from different times or different, see, they've got that T-U-R-E transcribed as June, J-U-N-E. So somebody who spoke English and not very good Danish did the transcription because the first letter is not a J, it's a T. Good. Okay. So that's just a duplicate record then. Yeah. And it's hard to tell because you look down below at the Frederick. Yeah, the F. Yeah, it, the F similar. is is very similar, but but you can see on the F that it's connected and it's not mm-hmm. on the other. So there, yeah. there, there's a little bit of real small differences, but that's getting used to that is helpful. Okay. Yeah. Okay, that's just a same record. Let's go see if there's another one that... Uh, yeah, so you've got a bunch of church records here for, I assume, various children's births. Mm-hmm. You've got a lot of the birth records for the yeah. children. 55 census. Okay. Says he's a widow by this time, 1855. Let's go in and zoom in on the record. And now we have a, a lot more children and a lot more detail here. You know, and I think it's attached to the wrong Josephine or the wrong Johan or something because Marie Fritz is the wife. She's here in the record, but this one says marital status widow. Well, 47. Could have marked, could have re- yeah. recorded that he was um, deceased in that and just had him under that name, even though mm-hmm. he was deceased. And if we could look across the record, we'd probably see the explanation for that. Yep. So, right there. Hmm. Hmm. What's that column? So this is. I'm afraid I don't know what that would mean. Let's see. Okay, so here's here's the next that you would be doing. Up in the, by the way, our caution whenever we're helping people, as in the uh, libraries, whether it's the Family History Library in Salt Lake or in. BYU Family History Library, is that we are said, we help people find their ancestors. We don't do their research for them. So in a sense, I'm kind of conditioned to show people where to go to get this information right. and not look. say, oh, well, let me translate this for you. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. if you go up where you were in the wiki, this is the word list. Now go back up to the search at the top of that, you know. Okay. And it's up in the upper right-hand corner there. And put in Danish record headings. Let's go to do a Google search and say Danish record headings. Or let's be as the word titles also or whatever. Those, that's, that's, yeah. Okay, so here's some images. Here they are. There they are. See, off to the mm, side. Nice. Okay. Okay, this so one there's was 55. So there's the, there's the English. Hey, there we go. I think we were looking at this word, religion. Okay, so there's those are the, there's a couple of tools really instantly available from the research wiki that you can use to get, get through this. Now, what would we do doing from here? This would be the beginning of working your way slowly backward as far as you felt like you wanted to go mm-hmm. using the same technique and looking for the records and, and verifying in each record. Um, you're likely to find, and as you focus on the children, you're very likely to find that there's some discrepancies and children need to be added or, or they don't belong or whatever. But if that happens, that's fine. That's part of this what process is. Eventually, you're going to get back record set narrows and you start having fewer and fewer records until basically you're, you know, when you arrive in about the 16, early 1600s, you're mostly done. Okay. So, so James, uh, oh, go ahead. 
I don't mean done, done. I mean, yeah, you're, you've reached the point where there's no way to go any further back from the existing records that we have. Yeah. So there's, there's, uh, let me kind of summarize the record sets and what we've done. This process is the, um, is the same process you would use anywhere in the world. Uh, first of all, you've got to orient yourself to the records and determine whether the places are consistent or even reasonable or even exist for that matter. And then you need to look at the dates and the, and the individuals and see if the ages and birth dates and christening dates or whatever are all consistent. And then you need to check to see that there's actually records that show the relationship between these people. I call that a parent-child relationship so that it exists. So that at each step you go back, and we went back one, one full generation back to the parents. And that, uh, and it verified that, yes, this is the, this family's two families are related. If we kept repeating that, we'd be just, we'd be doing what we would do. It's not like you're waking up every morning and saying, oh, we've got to do this different somehow. No, yeah, it's waking up every morning and knowing exactly what you have to keep doing over and over again to, to verify. And, and uh, as you do this, the, the byproduct is that you find additional people in addition to that, it also makes you give it gives you each step you go back gives you a higher confidence level that you're on the right track. I think I've heard you say that you're comfortable with researching in any region of the U.S., any country, because it's this process of. Yeah. Seeing in other words, we, we've relied on the let records. We found this, some tools that help us. Uh, we didn't have to run off and find somebody who spoke Danish to work our way through the census records because right here we have the translation into English and the records for each census year. Um, so there are tools out there that will let us do that. Even if we're not co proficient in, in Danish, the only thing that becomes the challenge is obviously reading the handwriting. We've already seen a, one transcription error where somebody mm -hmm. mistook a word in Danish for a name for an English word. Mm -hmm. so okay good and that's that's good so that's pretty much it all right thank you james really appreciate it see you next time okay